G'day, I'm Nurchin, and today we aren't talking about any normal cryptozoology. Grab your whippersnipper and weed killer as we dive into the world of cryptobotany. It's the man-eating tree of Madagascar. Let's cut to the chase. You're here for facts, and I happen to have indisputable evidence of man-eating trees. Roll the clip. Oh, wait, there's supposed to be a hyphen in there. Ah, oh, there we go. The man-eating tree of Madagascar, also known as the Madagascar tree. In 1874, New York World released an article featuring a letter by German explorer Carl Leisch. It told of his journey deep into the heart of Madagascar, where he met the Makodos tribe. It was with this tribe that he first encountered the tree. It was shaped like a pineapple, eight feet tall with a dark brown trunk hard as iron. At the top of the trunk, eight large leaves hung down towards the ground. A row of spines ran down each leaf, with the end being pointed like the horns of cattle. At the top of the tree sat a small bowl of viscous liquid, surrounded by a larger plate, and then surrounded by swirling tentacles. Surrounding the plate shape were large, thick, green tentacles, and surrounding the smaller bowl were thinner, almost translucent, white tentacles. So here's what happens. The tribe brings forward a woman and forces her to climb the tree at spear point. When she reaches the top, she drinks from the bowl and becomes hysterical. This is when the tentacles come to life. Like one of my Japanese enemies. Now, judging by the name of this tree, you may be able to piece together what happens next. But if you're unsure, it's harder to find a more accurate or graphic description than from the letter itself. <clears throat> it reads, The slender, delicate palpi with the fury of starved serpents quivered a moment over her head, then fastened upon her in sudden coils, round and around her neck and arms. Then, while her awful screams, and yet more awful laughter, rose wildly to be instantly strangled down again into a gurgling moan, the tendrils, one after another, like green serpents with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and then wrapped around her in fold after fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and the savage tenacity of anacondas, fastening upon their prey. And now, the great leaves slowly rose and swiftly erected themselves in the air, approaching one another and closing around the dead and hampered victim with the silent force of a hydraulic press and the ruthless purpose of a thumbscrew. Okay. As the victim was crushed, the tribe ran forward and collected the blood and viscera that oozed from the leaves. They drank from this liquid and partied the night away. Leash spent the rest of his time there documenting the tree and even managed to find smaller ones one of which he saw, eat a lemur. This is unlike any cryptid we've looked at so far. Not only is it completely stationary, but we had a qualified scientist there to document it. Problem is, Leash may have drank too much of the tree juice himself because there are some glaring issues with this story. But before we get to that, you'll have to know a bit more about its family and distant cousins. So what are carnivorous plants? These plants typically live in nutrient poor environments and rely on catching prey to survive. They mostly consume insects, but some of the large ones have been known to capture mammals or even reptiles. These different types of trap include pitfall, flypaper, snap, bladder, and lobster pot. That's the rice bubbles, right? And I tell ya, the second fiction writers found out about these things, they've become a staple to pop culture, including film, Literature, games, 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 and games. While the man-eating tree uses a syrupy lure like the pitcher plant and a collapsing stomach like the Venus flytrap, there's no plants that we know of that replicate this almost sentient tendril. While plants can feel and move, this takes time and energy, and the amount of energy needed to restrain a human would have to be enormous. Even if the syrup weakens the body, it's unlikely a plant would be able to move with the strength and speed required to capture a human. Then again, all the carnivorous plants we know of don't grow very large, so it's hard to say what would happen at this size. But what about larger plants? While most carnivorous plants don't grow very large, that's not to say other larger plants don't benefit from killing. See, a plant isn't considered carnivorous if it just opportunistically takes the nutrients from animals, but this doesn't make some of these plants any less dangerous. Take the Sionia brunoniana, the bird catcher tree. 
With seeds so sticky, it weighs down some birds that then collapse from starvation and die, turning into fertilizer for the tree. Or the Puya chalensis, the sheep-eating tree, that can entangle birds and animals in their spines until the animal dies and they are also used as fertilizer. Or the Machanil, tree of death, a tree so poisonous you can't even stand beneath it when it rains because it turns the water into a corrosive acid. And don't even get me started on that small, brown, hairy thing that claims lives every year. The coconut. These plants don't eat their prey, but in a way, absorbing the nutrients from killed animals is kind of the same thing. Now, I'm not saying these trees are man-eaters, but this is a real-life example of plants growing lethal abilities that might benefit them. Since the discovery of the man-eating tree, similar plants have popped up all around the world, such as the vampire vine from Central America that latches onto any skin it touches and instantly starts to drain the blood, or the yatevo, a tree from Africa with a short, heavily spiked trunk, and when people walk too close, it pulls them in with its branches and impales them on its spines, absorbing their blood. So where are they? These cryptid plants are all completely stationary, so why haven't we been able to find one? Or more importantly, are they real? Unfortunately, no they aren't. I can't say for certain about all the cryptid plants, but the man-eating tree of Madagascar is definitely fake. In 1888, the journal Current Literature released an article revealing the story to be a hoax, written by one of the New York World reporters, Edmund Spencer. You may have noticed that the style of writing from the report sounded a lot more like plant smut than a credible scientific article. There was no Carl Leash, there was no Makoto's tribe, and there was definitely no man-eating tree. Jury's still out about the existence of Madagascar. Despite the revelation, there are many people that still search for the tree, and many articles haven't been updated since the news. Some people swear that the tribes confirmed the existence of this tree, but there's no evidence to support this. One day we may find a tree that craves human blood, but not today. And not in Madagascar. Their soil quality is excellent. I don't think it's likely that need the extra nutrition. Maybe somewhere weird like Australia or Russia. I don't know. Either way, it's just a plant. So to stay safe, come prepared and just keep your distance. And there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeet!